This is Quad, and in this video, I want to tell you about cell cycle signaling. So one cell become two identical cells. This is a cell division. This cell division has few steps. I'm gonna start from G1. During the G1 phase, this cell will eat and grow, get ready to synthesize another copy of its genome. After this, the cell will get into the S phase. S stands for synthesis. During the S phase, the cell would copy its genome. And here you have one genome, but after S phase, the cell will have two identical copies of the genome. And after S phase, the cell would get into G2 phase, the second growth. The cell would eat, get ready, make sure its biochemistry is ready for the actual cell division. The cell division takes place in the M phase, mitotic phase. And mitotic phase also has few steps. There is prophase. Prophase is when a cell, so this is a cell, cellular membrane, and here is nucleus. And you have now copy one genome, copy two genome. The nuclear membrane starts to break down. The proteins that make up the nuclear membrane are lamins. And during the prophase, lamins break down, nuclear envelope breaks down, and microtubules can now get in and access the genome. After prophase comes the metaphase, and here is that cell. Now you don't have the nuclear envelope anymore, and the microtubules grab the cyst chromatids, the identical two copies of each chromosome. So this call is chromosome two, chromosome four, chromosome eight, there are more. These cyst chromatids are aligned. And after the metaphase comes the anaphase. The cyst chromatids now starts to separate and microtubules are pulling these cystic chromatids for separation and after the anaphase comes the telophase these separated cystic chromatids start to form their own nuclear envelope and finally after the telophase is cytokinesis and this is when the actual cellular membrane starts to split you would have cell one and cell two and these two cells are identical just to review this metaphase starts with the prophase breaking down of the envelope and accessing of the nuclear material by the microtubules and then the metaphase the microtubules align the cystic chromatids then you have anaphase where the microtubules now pull the cystic chromatids and then the telophase, the pulls is the chromatids start to make their nuclear envelope. And finally, cytokinesis, the cellular membrane will divide and you have now two identical cells. And when this is done, these two cells now move from the mitosis to the G0 phase, or they can go to G1 again and continuously divide. Most of cells do not go to G1 phase and continuously divide. They are done. Most of the cells in a body are in G0 phase. Limited number of cells continuously go through the cell division cycle to keep making copies. These are the stem cells and other special cells. They have to keep making copies because one of the copy is going to remain as the stem cell and the other copy is going to G0 phase and these cells in the G0 phase would work, specialize and die. When they die, new cells would replenish their role and these new cells come from stem cells that continuously go through cell division. There are many checkpoints to make sure every step is healthy. Checkpoint in G1 phase, make sure the cell has good resources to go through the cell division. And there's this checkpoint between G1 and S to make sure you have enough genetic material to copy the entire genome. And there's also a checkpoint within the S phase that checks for DNA replication errors. If there is a lot of error, then the cell has to stop its division or even kill itself. And finally, there is a checkpoint in the M phase. And this checkpoint makes sure that cell can go through a healthy mitosis. And in each of these checkpoints, the protein that 
does this magic checking work is CDK, cell cycle dependent kinase. CDK is add phosphate to other target proteins and these target proteins would facilitate the cell cycle or some of these proteins will stop the cell cycle. But CDKs can't work because they need a help of a regulating molecule and the molecule that regulates CDK are cyclines. Cyclines activate CDK and CDK can go and either activate or inhibit other proteins and these proteins do the work of cell division and the amount of CDK proteins in a cell is a fairly constant but CDKs don't work constantly they work only when you have cyclines and the amount of cycling in a cell actually fluctuates goes up and down and up and down and up and down the mRNA levels of cycline is fairly constant. So a constant amount of cycline protein will be made. However, when cycline activates CDK and CDK does its phosphorylation job to activate many target proteins, some of these proteins can now actually go and destroy cycline. So you make constant amount of cycline but when cycling activates the CDK, some of the target proteins will destroy cycling. And as a result, the CDK activity also goes with the cycling oscillation. And when CDKs are working here, here, then CDK target proteins are going to be activated and they will facilitate this cell division cycle to move forward. And let me tell you about a few different sets of uh, CDK cycling pairs. In the G1 checkpoint, which is here, you have cycling D regulating CDK4 or CDK6. And in the G1S checkpoint, that is this one, you have cycling E regulating CDK2. And in the S phase checkpoint, which is here, you have cycling A regulating the same CDK2. So G1 S phase checkpoint and the S phase checkpoint both use CDK2 to phosphorylate target proteins and control the cell cycle. But these CDKs are regulated by different regulating cyclines. G1 S checkpoint uses cycline E and S checkpoint uses cycline A. And finally the M phase checkpoint, that is this one that's controlling the whole mitosis, uses cycling B to regulate CDK1. So in summary, most cells don't continuously divide, but small number of cells do, and these are stem cells. And when they divide, they make stem cells themselves or one of those most cells that stay in the G0 phase and specialize, do the work and die. But when stem cells do divide, they go through G1 phase to grow, S phase to divide its DNA, G2 phase to grow again, and M phase to divide. And M phase has different parts, prophase, nucleus breakdown, and microtubules access to the genome, metaphase, the copied, genome material align, anaphase, the microtubules pull these copies to two different sides, telophase, these pulled genomic material start form nucleus, and finally cytokinesis that cuts the cellular membrane and produce final two daughter cells. And in a cell cycle there are many checkpoints, G1 checkpoint, G1 to S checkpoint, S checkpoint, and M checkpoint. And in each of these checkpoints, there are proteins that do the cell cycle job, check the cell cycle process, make the cell cycle move forward or stop it, or sometimes even killing the cell. And these cell cycle proteins are activated by cell cycle dependent kinase CDKs. The amount of CDKs in a cell is fairly constant, but CDKs are not always active. That is because CDKs need cycling to be activated. 
and the amount of cycling it oscillates, goes up and down. Although they're made fairly constantly, they are destroyed by the output of CDK themselves. So cyclings are constantly made and they activate CDKs, CDK activate proteins that would do the cell cycle job, but these proteins also go and inhibit the cycling. That's why cycling levels go up and down because of destruction and the CDK activity levels go up and down because they follow cycling protein levels. And finally, there are different combinations of cycling CDK checkpoints. G1 checkpoint uses cycling D to control CDK4 and 6. G1S checkpoint uses cycling E to control CDK2. S phase checkpoint uses cycling 8 to control CDK2. And M phase checkpoint uses cycling B to control CDK1. And here note that CDK2 is used in both G1S and S phase checkpoints but the cyclings that regulate them are different.